Hello everyone. In this presentation, we are going to study about the structure of monosaccharide and isomerism. First, we'll study about the structure of monosaccharides. Monosaccharides we can represent in two different ways. One is just we can write them in a straight line structure. This is also called Fisher's projection. Another one is called cyclical cyclical structure. That means monosaccharides we can represent either in straight line or cyclical structure. The cyclical structure is called Haworth projection. Okay, if you see in the textbook there is one more structure called boat and chair conformation. So that is not that important. So straight line structure and cyclical structure. I am going to explain both straight line structure and cyclical structure in this class. Okay, so straight line structure or Fisher's projection nothing but Suppose if you take glucose, glucose is a hexose. We already studied it contains six carbon atom. We all know that glucose is a aldohexose. So that means carbon number one contains functional group, aldehyde group. And all sugar last carbon atom will be CH2OH. It's very easy to remember the structure. So let me name number the carbon atom. Carbon number one, carbon number two, carbon number three, carbon number four. 5 and 6. So I am writing the structure of glucose. It's very easy to remember. The first carbon atom in all aldose is aldehyde group or functional group. Okay, is the functional group. And the last carbon atom always is CH2OH. So first carbon number 4 and carbon number 5 just we have to write the OH group on right hand side. And we have to write the OH group alternately thereafter. Now we have to fill the other place with H. So this will become the structure of carbohydrate glucose. So this is the Fisher's projection or straight line structure. Similarly, I can write the structure of fructose. Okay, this is also we can write like this. It also contains six carbon atom. One, two, three, four, five. 6. We all know that carbon number 6 is always containing CH2OH and the functional group of fructose is present in the second carbon atom. Let me number the carbon atom 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6. Okay. Then carbon number 5th OH is on right hand side, right hand side. Okay. Then we have to write the alternate. All other place is there will be H and in fructose there will be CH2OH group in first carbon atom so this will become fructose. This is straight line structure or Fisher's projection. Similarly we can represent carbohydrate in cyclical or uh, ring structure. Cyclical structure also called ring structure. It is Haworth projection. Okay. This structure also very easy to remember. So we know that glucose is a six carbon atom. So we have to write six member ring. It's called pyranose ring. I will name the carbon here, carbon atom. This will become carbon number one. This will become carbon number two. This will become carbon number three, carbon number four, carbon number five. And carbon number six I will show now. This is all the hydroxyl group and hydrogen group. Okay. Carbon number six will be, we know that you can see it there in the structure of this glucose always CH2OH. So this will become carbon number 6. This will be the carbon number 6. And if you want to remember the cyclical structure or Haworth projection, you just remember the position of OH group. OH, 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 OH and here this is OH. Just remember the position of OH. Or in other words, you remember up, down, up, down, up. Okay, up, down, up, down, up. Okay, all other place it will be H. This is the cyclical structure or Haworth projection of glucose. So we can represent monosaccharides in two different ways mainly. One is Fisher's projection, another one is Haworth projection. Now we will see isomerism. What is isomerism? Isomerism is, means any compound having same molecular formula but different structure. For example, if you take glucose, it is C6H12O6. 
if you take fructose it is also c6h12o6 if you take galactose it is also c6h12o6 so all the molecular formula is same but their structure is different okay this is called isomerism this isomerism there are two types one is structural isomerism another one is stereo isomerism so the structural isomerism is nothing but you see there is a functional group aldose here there is a functional group ketose here okay so based on the structure or functional group we can tell this these two are glucose and fructose are isomers they are structural isomers because of presence of functional group they both have c6h12o6 both have identical molecular formula but different in structure this is structural isomerism stereo isomerism is due to presence of asymmetric carbon atom what do you mean by asymmetric carbon atom asymmetric carbon atom means a carbon atom having a carbon atom having four different groups around it suppose you take carbon number 2 suppose you take carbon number 2 here so this is one group this is another group this is another group and the entire below we have to consider as one group a symmetric carbon atom is a carbon atom has got four different group around it similarly if you take carbon number 3 so this is one group this is another group entire above is another group entire below is another group. if you take uh, glucose we have one 2 3 and 4 asymmetric carbon atom so presence of this asymmetric carbon atom actually helps in formation of stereo isomers so stereo isomers are again there are different types one is d and l isomerism another one optical isomers another one is epimers epimers and the last one is anomers so there are four types of stereo isomerism we are going to study now first we will see d and l isomers so d and l isomers is nothing but suppose you take glyceraldehyde okay glyceraldehyde has got three carbon atom we already studied it is a triose okay this is the structure of glyceraldehyde for d and l isomers we need to see the position of oh group suppose i write like this oh on left hand side if the position of oh group is on right hand side we call d glyceraldehyde if oh group is on left hand side we call l glyceraldehyde but where exactly the position of oh so it should be farthest from the functional group carbonyl group or just last but one suppose glyceraldehyde this is the three carbon atom second carbon atom you have to see so here there is no confusion because it contains only three carbon atom so we will see we will take the structure of glucose okay glucose again it contains as usual it contains six carbon atom we will write the two glucose now as we know glucose contains ch2oh the last carbon atom ch2oh okay and it is a aldohexose it contains first we'll write normal structure of glucose we know that fifth and fourth oh on right hand side so this will become d glucose so here we have to see the penultimate carbon atom that means the carbon atom or the last asymmetric carbon atom or the last but one carbon atom the c carbon number 5 where if oh group is on right hand side we call d glucose similarly if oh group on left hand side okay oh group on left hand side all other place is h and functional group is cho so if you place a mirror here so it is exactly opposite is the mirror image of this d glucose so here we have to see the position of carbon number 5 where position we have to see the position of oh group if oh group is on left hand side 
on the penultimate carbon atom that is last but one carbon atom or farthest from the functional group last asymmetric carbon atom or penultimate last but one carbon atom where OH is then it will become L glucose. So this is D and L isomerism. We have to see the last but one carbon atom and we have to see the position of OH group. So D and L isomerism also called enantiomer. Enantiomer. That means they are mirror image of if you place a mirror here image will be exactly like this. So they are mirror image of one another. Not only the fifth carbon atom OH will be reversed, the entire OH and H group will be reversed. Okay, this is D and L. Then we have to see the next stereoisomerism is optical isomerism. Suppose you take a beaker and fill with some sugar solution and you put a light source here. So light will pass in all directions so that we need to keep a monochromator. That means it will make this different direction light, it will make into parallel beam of light. So this parallel beam of light will pass through here okay, because of this monochromator. Okay. And you observe here, okay, you observe here. So what we have to do, we have to take a beaker and so it's a glass beaker and fill with some sugar solution and there is a light source it emits in different direction and we have to place a monochromator so that it can make this different direction light it will make parallel beam of light this light pass through this glass pass through this solution and you observe here when this beam of light the plane of light it's called plane of light if it rotates in clockwise direction then we call it as dextrorotatory, dextrorotatory or plus or small d. Okay. If when you see through here, if the plane of the light rotates in anti-clockwise manner, then it is called levorotatory, levorotatory or we have to write minus or small n. Okay, don't confuse with capital D and capital L. Capital D and capital L are that we have to see the position of OH group in the last but one carbon atom. So optical isomerism is due to optical activity of the sugar when they are ability to rotate the plane polarized light. If they rotate in clockwise direction, it will be dextrorotatory or plus we can write or small d. Okay, if the same plane of the light rotates in anti-clockwise manner, we can write levorotator. This is about optical rotation. Next isomerism is epimerism. Epimerism. First, I will let me write the structure of glucose here. This is the glucose. How to remember? You write OH in fifth and fourth on right hand side. Then you have to put the OH on alternate. So this will become our glucose. This is the structure of straight line or Fischer's projection of glucose. Now, the same structure I can write like this CHOH. If I write like this, instead of OH on right hand side, if I write like this, okay, all other place it will be same. What is the difference between this? This is glucose, right? What will be this one? You can see the difference here is only with this carbon atom, carbon number 2. Otherwise, it is same. Carbon number two. Okay, this is carbon number two. You can can you notice the difference here? OH on right hand side. Here OH on left hand side. So this will become mannose. This is called mannose. Similarly, if I write the structure, you notice here the difference between this and glucose. What is the difference? Can you notice here? All other structure is same. But the only difference between carbon number, so let me name the carbon, it will be easy for you. Just let me highlight the carbon number 4 here and carbon number 4 here. So here OH group is on right hand side here, here it is on right hand side. So this will not be glucose, this will become galactose, this will become galactose. So now we have three different molecules, sugars. 
with the same molecular formula but different in their spatial configuration of arrangement of H and OH around the asymmetric carbon atom. Okay, this is epimerism. So epimerism means when two sugars differs with respect to single carbon atom, when two sugars differs with respect to single carbon atom, they are called epimers. Here, mannose and glucose are epimers with respect to carbon number 2. Similarly, glucose and galactose are epimers with respect to carbon number 4. But mannose and galactose are not epimers because they are different in two different carbon atoms. So the definition of epimerism when two monosaccharides differs with respect to one another with a single asymmetric carbon atom. Single asymmetric carbon atom. So mannose and glucose are epimers with respect to carbon number 2. Glucose and galactose are epimers with respect to carbon number 4. Okay. Last one is anomerism. So, so far all D and L optical isomerism and epimerism refers to straight line structure. Anomerism refers to Hauer structure or cyclical structure. Okay. Let me draw the structure of glucose. How to remember now? Up, down, up, down, up. Okay. All other place you fill with H. So this is the structure of glucose. So let me draw another structure. So instead of here, I am writing the OH group, position of the OH group. Instead of writing here, I write here. Okay. All other place it will be same. You notice here is there any difference here between this and this structure both are glucose so the, I'm explaining about anomerism anomerism this is one of the type of stereoisomers okay this is also glucose and this is also D glucose this is also D glucose and also both are destro rotatory then just difference is anomerism refers to only ring structure or cyclical formula if the position of OH group below the plane in the anomeric carbon atom, so the first carbon atom is the functional carbon atom where aldehyde group is present in the glucose, so we call it as anomeric carbon atom. If the position of OH group is below the plane, then we call alpha D glucose. If the position of OH is above the plane, then we call beta glucose. Okay. If the position of the above, above the plane, B stands for beta, beta, okay. If it is below, below the plane, e, L, L stands for alpha, okay. So like this you can remember. If OH group in the anomeric carbon atom is below the plane, then it is alpha. In the anomeric carbon atom, OH is above the plane, then it will be beta, okay. So this is beta, this is alpha glucose. This is anomerism. This is the isomerism. So, summary isomerism can be structural isomerism or stereo isomerism. Stereo isomerism again D and L okay, and small d and small l or plus or minus that is optical isomerism, epimerism and finally anomerism. Anomers. Okay. This is anomers. Thanks for watching.